In the news, we'll hear about exciting data in the relapse multiple myeloma setting and more from last week's American Society of Clinical Oncology Genital Urinary Cancer Symposium. All that and more starts right now on OncLive News Network. Hello and welcome, I'm Laura Jones. First, exciting news for patients with relapsed multiple myeloma. The head-to-head -head Phase three Endeavor trial randomized 929 patients with relapsed multiple myeloma to dexamethasone with either carfilzomib or bortezomib. The analysis found that the progression-free survival was two times longer in the carfilzomib arm than in the bortezomib arm. Therefore, treatment with carfilzomib reduced the risk of disease progression by 47% over bortezomib. According to Dr. Pablo Cagnoni, president of Onyx Pharmaceuticals, as new treatment options become available to patients with relapsed multiple myeloma, comparative trials like Endeavor are becoming increasingly important to help physicians make informed decisions about the optimal care for patients. These results, coupled with similar positive results in the ASPIRE trial, may help to advance carfilzomib as a new standard of care in multiple myeloma. And more from the Genitourinary Cancer Symposium. Dr. Charles Ryan from University of California, San Francisco, presented the most recent data from the Cougar 302 trial. The phase three double-blind placebo-controlled trial randomized over 1,000 men with asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer to receive either abiraterone, acetate plus prednisone or placebo plus prednisone. Previous positive overall survival data became more pronounced after adjustment for crossover from placebo to active treatment. Prior analysis showed that abiraterone acetate significantly reduced the risk of death by 19% versus placebo. Adjusted data shows a 26% reduction in the risk of death. Dr. Mark Schultz, executive director of the Prostate Cancer Research Institute, summarized the findings from the trial. The Cougar 302 study showed a unequivocal survival advantage for abiraterone compared to placebo. And this has been a rather revolutionary development considering that the standard previously was taxotere or docetaxel. And in comparing these two different agents, an oral hormonal agent versus a chemotherapeutic agent, we're seeing uh, equal efficacy with a substantial reduction in uh, toxicity, a substantial reduction in uh, inconvenience uh, of administration. An unusual benefit from having a higher BMI was reported at the symposium. Dr. Laurence Aviges, visiting professor at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, describes the findings on a study looking at how obesity, a known risk factor for kidney cancer, can affect outcomes. And so what we have done and what we confirm today is that we looked at patients with metastatic kidney cancer that were treated with systemic therapy and we tried to investigate the association between body mass index, being overweight and obese, and outcome. And what we confirm in more than 4,000 patients is that patients with high BMI, high body mass index, are more likely to have longer overall survival longer time to treatment failure, they, it means that they stay a longer time on treatment, and also better tumor shrinkage when compared to patients with normal or low BMI. How this information will affect oncologists' decisions related to weight loss in this population is yet to be determined. Finally, last month we were pleased to report about the approval of lenvatinib for thyroid cancer and have Dr. Marcia Brose describe the agent's use. Now we invite you to view all of Dr. Brose's videos on thyroid cancer. In this series of videos, she shares how to select the most appropriate patients for the available therapies, as well as strategies for monitoring patients and the role of genetic testing and personalized medicine. Visit the website on your screen to view all of the videos. That'll do it for today. Thanks so much for watching OncLive News Network. I'm Laura Jones. We'll see you next time.